I must switch your face, Damjima. Uh, without him, I don't think I will be doing exactly what I'm doing today. Praise the Lord. And you can't trust me, so let me put the hands together for my father. So, living proof. The anchor text is first, uh, John chapter 4, verse 4. Is that not so? Hallelujah. First John chapter 4, verse 4. And by now we should be familiar with that scripture, right? Yes. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you of God? Come on, aren't you of God? Oh, no. It says, yeah, of God, you need two children. Of course, it is only God that has the right to call us little children. And of course, he's not talking about babies, is, it? is he? He's talking about everybody. The Apostle John, who wrote that scripture, history believes that the man was one of the oldest living apostles. You know, he was the one that was banished to the island of Patmos. Hallelujah. And he wouldn't die. We had heard that he was thrown into a pot of burning oil. Is that also boiling oil? Right? And he did not die. So you can guess, you know, how well he must have lived, how long he must have lived. Is that also? So even Apostle John had the right to call us the two children. Mm. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The man that wrote this scripture can call a 70 years old man <laughs> little child. Do you understand me now? Because he lived so long. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I said he lived so long. It was almost unkillable. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm a little child in the hands of the Father. And I expect you to say the same of yourself. It doesn't matter how, how long I grow or how old I get. I'm a little child in the hands of the Father. Praise the Lord. So he said, you have got little children and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Father, we want to thank you for your precious time in your presence. Thank you, Jesus, because... Our hearts are aligned with your will, with your plans, and with your purpose. And therefore, our lives are made better in today's service. No one leaves the same way they came. We thank you for the illumination of your word. We thank you that we receive the fullness of the same blessing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So it says you have God in the children and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We know we are in the world, aren't we? But then he says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That should mean that although we are in the world, we are not of the world. Is that not so? I said, although we are in the world, we are not of the world. Is that not so? Do you understand me? That is, we are not products of the world. Is that an evil person here? Can I see, can I see your end of your evil? <clears throat> There's no evil person here. Okay. What about South South? I know you put your hands up. <laughs> but that, okay, so she is, she is in the, what is it West or South? She's in the West. This is the West, right? Southwest. Or she's not of the West. Do you understand that? Come on now. I want to let you I'm more in Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? So she, I better keep me very open. <laughs> so she is of, you know, the South, but she is where? In the West. Do you understand? I, I want to be very practical. I want you to be able, I want, the, I want the, the child, even the smallest person, to be able to take something off. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? That's why I'm using very simplistic examples. So you see, he says you are in the world, right? And I said that you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Is that not so? So it must mean that there's somebody else that is of the world. The people of the world. Is that not so? When Jesus was praying for them in John 17, they had said to them, you know, they have not prayed that you should take them out of the world. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Come on now. But you see, they are in the world. Just help them to overcome. Are you understanding me now? Because while you have bread in you, you will always be in the world. Is that not so? Yes. Come on. While you have bread in your nostrils, you will always be bread in this world. But you see, there's something that separates us from the people of the world. It is the fact that the Spirit of God is in us. Hallelujah. That is why he said, greater is he that is where? Come on now. So, despite the fact that you are in the world, there's also something or someone that is in you. Come on now. 
So he says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So there is you and then there is in the world. Or there is the world. Come on now. So let me make it very simple. John here is comparing the believer to the world. You know, the believer is one person, isn't he? I said, I'm one person, am I not? One person. And the world is the world. Is that not so? Very big. So he's saying that there's somebody in the world and there's somebody in the believer. But the person in the believer, that is one person, is greater than the person in the world. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Paul is saying that, I mean, John is saying that you are one person and there's somebody inside you. What is your size? Yeah, I mean, see you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? This, this is his size. Is that not so? Maybe if he grows older and older, will get you know, bigger. But you see, we can still understand you know, the limits of the human body. Is that not so? But he's saying that there's somebody in this man that is bigger than the person in this whole world. Hallelujah. Do you know how big on those state is? Not to talk of Nigeria, not to talk of the world. Are you understanding me? All of the things I came to this to stir you up so that I didn't, I didn't really come to proof. I, come, I came to raise proofs. Do you understand me? And raising proofs is not making people prove. It's just making you rise in the consciousness of the proof that you already have. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, if a man gets born again today, he is as much the evidence or the proof of the power of God as the person that got born again 30 years ago. Do you understand me? Because it is the same spirit that is in him that is in the 30 year old born again. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. Yes. So you are already, the fact that you are saved is proof that you are the proof. No. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, he said it. He said, Greater is he that is in you. So there's somebody in you. Come on now. I said, There's somebody in you. Okay, there's somebody in me. There's somebody in you. Ah, thought you were going to say that. Do you understand me now? So there's someone inside me that is the same person inside Pastor Frida, right? That is the same person inside this young lady here. Do you understand me now? And there's no difference in quantity or quality. Do you understand me now? Hmm? There is no difference in quantity, right? And in quality. Do you get me now? You know, some people think Kampala is a very cheap food. Right? And they think, is it foil? I'm not really fan of all this, but I think there's foil lace, right? It's very expensive. So they think foil lace is more expensive than Kampala, right? So you can have five yards of Kampala and have five yards of foil lace. Same quantity, is that also? But is the quality the same? Come on, is it the same? No! But you see, when it comes to the spirit of the believer, at the quality, at the quantity, it is the same. Are you understanding me now? And one of the things that would characterize, you know, the lives of people in this meeting will be the fact that they will be able to walk in the abilities of God that is on the other side already. You see, when a woman that has a child and then suddenly wakes up 1 a.m. to touch the child and sees that the child is already burning out. You know, there's something that mothers are always afraid of. Is it, is it, uh, con, con something? Convulsion. Convulsion, yes, thank you. Convulsion, right? Igbono, right? Is it Igbono? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Giri. Yes. Now, <laughs> convulsion, when a child gets too hot and it, it's internal, then external, it can lead to convulsion, right? And the parents, or the mother particularly, becomes afraid. Is that not so? Yes. And then she's possibly thinking, maybe she wants to soak water and soak the well inside, you know, water, cold water, and then, you know, be. You know, dabbing the child's body with it. And then suddenly things in the man will form a chant about it. You know how we do a bad We do a bad one of your bad So, understand? And then, after she must have tried everything, she then thinks, Daddy, go. Daddy's pastor, not her husband. Daddy, go. And then she picks her phone to her and then there's pastor's number. Unfortunately, pastor couldn't pick the call. Is that not so? And because pastor could not pick the call, eventually the child dies. Are you understanding me now? You know, when that happens, she can blame it on the pastor. I don't know. This is how people think. Do you understand me now? And the woman is wondering, why did the pastor pick the call? Well, the point is, why did you not learn also to have, you have the Bible, don't you? 
So why did you not learn to appropriate the blessings in the Bible? Hallelujah. Somebody scares you that you carry your Bible and put the light of you and sleep. You will not do anything. Hallelujah. Yeah. Or you think it does anything by putting your Bible on your pillow because they are having funny things. Ah, I let no man leave you. Fact. Are you guys getting me now? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So you see, it is your responsibility to dig up the treasures that is on your inside. There are treasures there. So the pastor shows you the path. Is that not so? Or you are the one that will walk on the path. He cannot walk the path for you. Hallelujah. Do you understand? That's why a pastor, a pastor, his wife is in labor and then, he will go back and say, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. And he quotes this scripture, quotes this thing, God, he told me this, he told me that. And eventually the woman will deliver safely. Is that not so? You know you can do that too. You don't have to be a pastor to do that. You know as a husband, you can do that for your wife. Are you getting me now? You know, as a, as a mother, you can do that for your child. With, as, as a child, you can do that for your parents. Hallelujah. Are you understanding me now? Because the proof of the power of God is the spirit on your inside. He said, the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. You see, con convulsion is in the world and of the world, isn't it? Or is there convulsion in heaven? Ah, challenge is convulsion. Of course not. So you see, convulsion, malaria is in the world, right? And it is of the world. Is that not so? That's why a dead man, whether, uh, whether born again or not born again, cannot have malaria, right? Can he? Because the body, right, that allows malaria is already buried. Is that not so? So he has left the grave. Come on now. Even though the body is in the grave. Is that not so? So you see, because you are not of the world, you can exercise power that is what, greater than the power that is in the world. Hallelujah. And we must be filled with the consciousness of the fact that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. It is when we know these things that the world will not be able to dominate us. Are you understanding me? Are you getting me now? Because we must make our pastors work easier. Hallelujah. And I use the word easier because maybe some of us have been making it easy. <laughs> you, know, you get me now? It is comparative. So it needs to be easier. Do you understand me now? We must make it easier. Excuse me. How are we going to make it easier? By paying attention to the word of God. Is that not so? Which is the word of life. So that the things that we learn, we are able to put it into practice. Are you understanding me now? I said the things that we learn, we are able to put it into practice. I tell people, you see, the best, the, the worst time to exercise faith is when you need faith. Or, or, let me put it in a simpler way. The best time to exercise faith is when it is when I mean the worst time rather to exercise faith it is when it is urgent. Emergency. Emergency faith does not work. I mean your pastor has been teaching every day, day in, day out, Sunday, Wednesday, or is it Tuesday? You haven't been paying attention, you don't review your notes, you don't think about it, and then one day you are at work, and then somebody started having epileptic seizures and then that's the day you are now <laughs> pastor yeah of course you're not a pastor but because you're always gentle in office you know time of opening prayer you want to my pray so of course they, they already call you pastor right she be pastor yeah and then kill a verse by kill a verse by the hospital is far from you know where the workplace is and that, that's the day you don't want yeah, everyone by you're already shivering because you have not built your faith. Have you? No. Are you understanding me now? You see, nobody needs to tell you that you will fail except God shows mercy. Do you understand me now? So it means that you cannot bank on result. I mean, God can show mercy, you know. I mean, God can show mercy, right? That's God is merciful, isn't he? He's merciful and gracious. But you see, there's no consistency when you're relying on mercy. You can't be sure. I want to be sure that the life of my children is safe. Abby. So it means you don't, you cannot bank on mercy when it comes to that. You cannot bank on mercy. You must bank on something. You must have an investment. Are you understanding me? Do you get what I'm trying to say, church? You cannot. So you see, you must cultivate your faith. That is how you can fully exemplify your position as a living proof. 
you understanding me now? And Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not just referring to children or people that are just growing. Hallelujah. It's referring to everybody. The 60 year old man has to protect the legacy, right? And the heritage of his children. The 10 year old must understand that he will not always survive on the prayers of his mother. No man has ever done anything, anything substantial in destiny that depending on their mother's prayer. Uh, let me break it down. See, you can't do anything to tangible and by relying on your parents' prayer. I, I wish I... Pa, this, is, this is pastor's mom. And obviously you know she must have prayed for her children. But you see, the bulk of what pastor is doing is not... It's, you can't work for God on your mother's prayer. Maybe that will help you understand what I'm trying to say. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Or you think uh, Baba Debo's son or, or Baba Bela's son would, would, would you know, be on fire for God because Baba is on fire for God. It does not work that way. So you must have your own investment. Hallelujah. That is why we're not going to be joined together. Hope you know even husband and wife will not be joined together. And they are one. It's only here. Hallelujah. That's why they became one flesh, not one spirit. Because it is spirits that will be judged, not bodies, not flesh. Do you understand me now? So we must understand that every man is responsible for himself. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand me now? Every man is responsible for himself. So you cannot afford to joke with every opportunity you get to develop yourself. Do you understand me now? Are you getting me? You can't joke with it. Praise the Lord. Remember a story I had about a particular older minister of the gospel and then somebody had died and then they picked of course you know trying to bring the person back to life he was not coming back to life and then they called this minister and all those things and eventually he you know put the phone to the ears of the dead person and then he prayed show to the day go the pray again show the day go the and they were wondering what happened and the next thing the line went dead. That is, the man stopped talking to them. And then the next thing they were hearing was, he said, show one it damn alone. Who do you think he was talking to? Who do you think he was talking to? Do you know what it means for a man to say, show one it damn alone? I don't know if you understand me. Oh, would you leave, I, I wish you get what I'm trying to say. Only show one it damn alone. And the next thing, the dead person came back to life. That even God knew, that boy alone. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. The man has an investment that he's banking on. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand me now? There's something he's banking on. He did not, he said, Of course, he was talking to God and saying, ah, 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 you're dialing now. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. We must all be that conscious. Hallelujah. We must be that conscious. Are you guys getting me? Church, are you getting me? I want everybody to leave this place with a consciousness. Eh? That I am the proof of God's power on it. Come on, walk by alone. Oh, come on, the presence. Do you understand me? Come on, walk. I know alone. Oh, come on, the beginning. We should be able to say presence. Are you, are you understanding me? Because we are, whether we like it or not, the custodian of the blessings of God on it. Praise the Lord. How many of us have seen God physically? Can you please put your hands up? Let's celebrate you. Nobody, right? How many of us have seen servants of God? Put your hands up. You haven't seen any. That? I mean, how many of us have seen servants of God or men of God? Everybody, right? So it means that the reason why they are servants of God or men of God is because God is not coming. I said God is not coming. Didn't get it. I said God is not coming. If they invite Buari to a place and then he sends Oshibadio, if they say Oshibado, should they be expecting Buari? Ah, Abi? And when they say Oshibado, how would they receive him? Is he as Oshibado as Buari? Because he, on do you understand what I'm trying to say? He's on an errand. So they will not say Vice President. They will say we are receiving the President. Even though it is Oshibado, right? That is the same way God has put us on the head. Do you understand now? As custodians of his power custodians of his grace 
as proof that God is here. Why did they call Jesus? They said Emmanuel. Is that not so? What does Emmanuel mean? I, I, I thought so too. Emmanuel means God with us. So that when Jesus, after he was raised from the dead, when he left, we know he did not leave. Uh, the fact that you are here today is a proof that Jesus did not leave. Are you guys getting me? If you don't agree, that child agrees with me. I said the fact that you are here today is proof that Jesus has not left. Do you understand me now? So in your homes, in your houses, in your places of work, in your schools, there should be enough proof that Jesus is alive there. Is that not so? There should be enough proof. The fact that you are present there. Hallelujah. Are you guys getting me? Come on, are you guys getting me? See, I'm a living proof. Are you understanding me now? Is it making more sense? Come on, is it making more sense? See, I'm a living proof. So when they say God is dead, you stand there and say God is not dead. See, you have not even walked the miracle. The fact that we are standing there is proof that God is not dead, that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. That is, that is the consciousness that you should have as a Christian. And you know, I'm not speaking to pastors, am I? I'm speaking to everybody, including myself. Praise the Lord. Do you understand me? That's why I said to myself, see, there's no man that comes in contact with me that will not come into the fullness of the consciousness that God is alive. Are you getting me? I have seen Jesus, but it doesn't make me better than those that have not seen him. Do you understand? Because whether or not you have seen Jesus, Jesus is in all of us. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. You know, when you see Jesus, you are seeing him externally, right? Outside, is that not so? But you see, Jesus is inside you. Right? So, Jesus is even closer to you than the clothes you are wearing. Because he's where? Inside, inside. Hallelujah. See, this is the power that overcomes sin. You don't understand. How can I, how can I take the member of Christ and join it to an harlot? Is that not what he said? You, you don't understand. So, I want to fornicate. And I know that Jesus is inside me. So I should be thinking, I am the temple of God. How can I carry Jesus? Jesus is watching you. I said Jesus is watching you. Did you understand me? You want to falsify document at work. Oh, ah. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. I said Jesus is looking at it. He's, you know you are looking at the document you want to lie, right? Jesus also is looking through your own eyes at that document. It's hard to lie. Do you understand? It is hard to fundicate when you are full of this knowledge. Are you getting me now? So you must come to the fullness of the understanding that you are the proof that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Because when Jesus rose from the dead, he entered inside me. Come on. When he rose from the dead, he entered inside you. Hallelujah. And because you know that Jesus is inside you, there is no mountain that you cannot flatten out. Are you getting me now? So your child is sick. How hard is it to get your child healed? Then you might keep pastor, with pastor. Hey, pastor, no, bro, to your way. Are pastor? That may agree, sir. Of course, Pastor Frida agrees, so don't worry. What do you understand what I'm trying to say? You must cultivate yourself in these things. So you will make the work. Imagine that this is our current, right? Imagine what pastor is doing. You are able to also reproduce the same things. How difficult is it to win so when everybody is carrying the power of God consciously? You know it's easy. So that we are not waiting for pastor or minister to come before we do something. Hallelujah. And as a matter of fact, some of the things that will happen today will be that as many as have ailment, sickness, diseases in their body will get healed. Hallelujah. We see, we see miracles. Hallelujah. But you see, even miracles are not proof that God is, God is here. Are you born again, sir? I'm not going to be proud about it. Now. Are you born again, sir? Now, the fact that he is born again. Well, do you speak in tongues? Not yet, sir. Uh, you will speak in tongues. You will speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Who talks in tongues here? Hey, I want you. 
Oh my. Hey, but I see who has 1,000 naira new notes now. It might be hard to understand the But how can I say who talks in tongue and you are now? Ah, ah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The fact that you talk in tongues is enough proof. Hmm? You know, Elijah, you don't talk in tongues. <laughs> you know, Elijah was so powerful. I'm going to show you, you know, a couple of scriptures. You know, we are God of Elijah, send down fire. Isn't that what we're saying? Right? But you see, we are not sincere. We are hypocrites. We are hypocrites. We should say God of Daddy only. You don't understand. Elijah has no usefulness to us today. What have you learned from Elijah? Did he teach you? Do you understand me? We are so insincere. People that are no ex. When, when our forefathers were even existed, they were no, I mean, they had gone. Do you understand me now? Elijah did not contribute anything to my own life. Oh. So I would rather celebrate the God of Theophilus Danjuma. You don't understand me? Celebrate the God of Pastor Dam. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Because these people are alive. And they have proof that God is powerful. And God is here. And God loves us. Are you understanding me now? Come on now. Are you getting me? So, I don't care about God of Elijah. Elijah has had this time. What's the law? Have you got learning? What's the law? Now, it is the days of Elijah. Because I know when I said this, these are the days of Elijah. It is not the days of Elijah. Elijah has a low time where you I mean, let us spend our own time in peace for God's sake. Are you getting me now? Come on, are you getting me? These are the days of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus gave power to me. When that time when Buhari traveled to go and do his medical, whatever, he gave power to Oshibajo, right? So it meant that as long as it was the time of Oshib Osh that this year was abroad, Oshibajo had power. Come on now. So, if you keep talking about Buhari, Oshibado can punish you. Are you getting me now? Because we must understand that times and seasons exist, right? And everybody has had their season and now we are having our own season. And when we're in the consciousness of Jesus Christ, we will be able to produce more results. Come on now. What was the significant thing that Elijah did? Elijah killed children. Is that not so? Elijah called down fire. Do you understand me now? Elijah called down fire. Bonds, you know, uh, killed the prophet of Baal. Is that not so? Uh, you should go, go, go to the backyard there and find the Babalawo and kill him. Do you care me now? Those things are irrelevant. Right? So how then can we prove the power of God when we display it? Hallelujah. It's not when we kill. No! It is when we save. When we save. Hallelujah. Somebody... Mutaru is going to hell. And then you preach the gospel to Mutaru. And Mutaru turns his life over to Jesus Christ. Is that not so? You have exercised a greater power. I said you have exercised a greater power. You know what it means to deliver people from hell? You know what it means to go to hell? Hallelujah! And then you deliver someone from hell. And you don't think you've done a big service? Ah, you don't know. Why do you think the scripture says that there is great joy in heaven? Over how many? One. How many? One, no! Oh. You know, when he say heaven, he's saying in the name of the Spirit, right? And that joy is not only angels that are rejoicing. Even God is rejoicing. I say even God is rejoicing. Because Tima lost your Oja. Oja Oba, for example, Timo there... No, no, it doesn't even deserve. Simba send your wo, right? Soja Basia and Toma Mamita Toma Toma Mamita. Are you getting me now? And then I buy, I pay for meat in advance. You know that when they bring the meat to my house, I will feel glad. Even though I already paid for it. Because now I have what I paid for. So Jesus paid for the sins of everybody. Come on now. But we have not delivered everybody to him. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. So, how do you think you will feel when you deliver one person? Ah, this is another one. You don't understand me? Because he is happy what he paid for. Imagine you, 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 you uh, younger people will understand me. You, you bought a car via auction. 
that's online right in america and they will ship it you know when you paid for the car you know it's your car <clears throat> but when they bring the car into the country you will actually truly know it's your car and the feeling is different ah, Pastor, yeah. i said the feeling is different do you understand me now that is how jesus feels when one person gets born again but, ah i just got another one that i paid for once you pay me wally i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say that is how it feels so you don't have to raise the dead so to speak before you understand that you are doing great wait wait you know there are two kinds of death you know there is physical death right come on now is that not so before kadoku right and there is also eternal death is that not so that is death in the lake of fire that's the punishment for sin is that not so so which one is greater physical death or eternal death come on now good so the man that brings someone from physical death and the man that brings someone from eternal death which one has done the greater work do you understand me so when jesus said that the works that i do shall you do what were the works that he was doing he was raising the dead abby he was healing the sick he now came and said greater works I said, he said, greater works. So, what do you think is the greater work? It is salvation. What? Wait, do you think you can raise more dead than Jesus? I don't know. You, wait, you, can, you want to compete with Jesus? <laughs> do you understand me? So, when, obviously, when he's saying greater works, he's talking about something he did not do. Abi? Because the only thing Jesus did not do was to preach the gospel to people and get them born again. He gave us that work to do. So he said, the same thing that I do, you will do. You will heal the sick, right? You will raise the dead, so you will provide clarity and direction. But he says, even greater works now. You will deliver people from the claws of eternal death. You will deliver people from the lake of fire. Are you guys getting me? So you see, I'm doing greater work when I get one person born again. Even if it is a five-year-old girl. Because soul, because equality in the soul, it is the same thing. So the 50 year old guy, the 10 year old there, is the same quality in the eyes of God. Come on now. Are you getting me? So we understand that, oh, we are so blessed. Our generation is so blessed. Because even Elijah did not do this work. Ah! Are you getting me now? You know, Samuel was very accurate as a prophet. The Bible says almost none of his words fell to the ground. Are you welcome? But you see, there is greater than Samuel that is here. You know, the first thing that Jesus said was that John the Baptist, oh great, you go go want to put one together. I'll be to a great John the Baptist. That's what scripture says about us. Because the spirit is in us. That spirit that was staying upon them is in us. So Kishekoma one visit. Because they were not always in the spirit. But we, we are always in the spirit. Romans 8, it says that we are in the spirit because the spirit of Christ is in us. So what does it mean to be in the spirit? For the spirit to be in us. So he says, greater is he that is in you. Come on. Than he that is in the world. Are you guys getting me? See, you must leave this place confident. You must leave this place sure. The, the, is, is it not the year of divine assurance? You know, you must be coming at the ah ah. Then 2023, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. How many people are coming? Do you get me now? Mama, they are doing businesses. Me, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. You are confident. You are confident because you know. Muti Are you getting me now? You must be like that, and it is in knowledge, right? That's why we teach every day. Is that? That's why you come to church. Come on now. 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 Come on so the usefulness is in knowing how to use it. So we have eternal life, everybody. Same quality, same quantity, same level. Is that not so? But you see, our knowledge of his use, on lo differ, on lo yato. That's why it seems somebody else is doing better than this person. No, it's, 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 it's in what he knows. Wait. Do we have a doctor here? Do we have a nurse here? Where are you, please? Let me see your hand. Good, man. Now, she's a nurse. Are you a nurse? Thank God. Now you are not a nurse. 
So what is the difference between her and you? Because she knows. If you went through the same thing she went through, would you not know the same thing that she knows? We will not call her a nurse. <laughs> so it means that the difference between them is what they know. And why we would ask, we would call for her when there's a need, an emergency, medical emergency, and not call for her is because she knows what she does not know. Abibeko. So no man is more proof of God's power than the other person. He's yeah, what they know. Are you getting me, church? Eh? And it is never too late to know these things. See, I like how that is responding. You know. If there's anyone that is giving me ginger here, it is that you. Man, I'm going to 50, sir. Hey, they're for me ginger. Just kidding. Hallelujah. But you understand me, church. <laughs> Do you understand me? So you must be excited. There is power in the name of Jesus. And I have that name as my eternal inheritance. Are you getting me? You know, Jesus did not use his name. I change your name in the name of Jesus. Because his name was not, was not for himself. Are you getting me now? So when he rose from the dead and he got that power, he gave it to us. As an eternal inheritance. So even that name is still our home when we get to heaven. Are you getting me now? So, that, you, know, you know, Muslims also use the name. But Muslims have less rights than us. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Right? They have less right than we do. Is that not so? We are the ones that are the custodians of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when Philippians was saying that, you know, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue. Do you know that there's a difference between at the name and at the mention of the name? He did not say at the, you know, at the mention. It, the Bible did not say at the mention of the name. Oh. Leave the mention of the name for Muslims. You know, Muslims need to mention the name to use it. Believers do not. Because at the name is the location. Uh, meet me at Abata. Meet me at Funab. Meet me at Futa. Is that not so? So you see, the, the divine address of the power of God is this man that is standing here. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. So the Muslim has to mention it. That's why on on work on Jokon, they were traveling and then the tire burst and then the car was, you know, the bus was swerving. And then everybody was, even Christians were afraid. And then Muslim woman in Egypt said, Hey, Jesus! <laughs> Wait, the fact is that when she shouted Jesus, the vehicle stopped. Be because the name works for unbelievers too. Yes. 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 Don't you know that Jesus died for them too? I work until you obtain any times one. Are you getting me now? So, you know, Babala was also called the name. Uh, I don't know who was sharing it. Maybe it was apostles. I don't even know. How that they went to visit an abalist. And then Babala won't bow on Feshogo. So he entered into the inner chambers. And while he was in the inner chambers trying to do one or two things, it seemed that the whole thing backfired. So, you know, when you know demons in any level. So it seemed that a greater demon. <laughs> That his own demon came and then you know was trying everything that he knew Koshisha, until he heard Baba shouted in the name of Jesus. And then the Baba came back alive. And the brother was asked, he was a pastor, I remember. Pastor felt like a pastor fellow show. So he was now asking Baba, Ah, I heard you, sir. Baba said, Oh, 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 money. You don't know. Eh, that, that's the name. Even the demons know. I said, my father won't know. And we don't know. I said, even my father won't know. Knows, and he's even using it. So, my father will come to the end of his, himself. He can't come. He can't fail. Are you getting me now? So, he quickly employs the use of the name. But we are the divine address of the name. Hallelujah. So that I tell myself, whatever it is I lay my hands upon prospers. Uh -uh. I say, I'm the divine address of the name. Come on now. Nothing dies in my hands. I know people that are nurses, man. Six, over 60 years. And she's, she has been a nurse almost all her life. When she grew up, studied nursing. 
No child has ever died in her hands because she's a maternity, all this maternity, this thing. And she said she told God when she was young that no child must die in my hands because you, are, you said you are living in me. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. People are appropriating the name. Why are you not appropriating it? Hallelujah. Amen. You know, people, people can be so hard work. Wait, if hard work is what makes people prosper. Or you think you are more hard working than them? Ah. Abi, If it is hard work that makes us prosper, people that are under the bridge should be. You know, do you know the kind of wait, bricklayers should be richer than everybody? Do you understand me now? People that are doing hard labor, not just hard work. It shows that prosperity does not only answer to hard work. Oh. There are other ingredients, right, that come together to ensure that you prosper. You know, there is hard work, there is also right work. Oh. And you will only know right work when you believe in higher powers. That's why woman here and your mom, oh, in the olden days, right? So that when they check the anyomo, they will say, ah, ejo, ejo, eh, kilino manche, kilino anyomo, is that also? And when he follows that path, you know he will prosper. Because they consulted higher powers, right? But you see, we have the highest power. So that when you give back to your child, you can say, this is what you will become. Not that you are, you are, you are just creating something. Because you know. Hallelujah. The custodian of all wisdom is the spirit of God. And that spirit, where is he living now? So how can you not know? Wait, if you don't know what my own child will become, you should at least know what your own child will become. <laughs> Are you getting me? Yeah. Are you getting me now? So you see, we have enough blessing in the name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, say, I have enough blessing in the name. Do you understand me? Church, do you understand me? Yeah. You must be steered. When you go to your place of work, you must be steered enough to go and effect changes. Hallelujah. One, 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 uh, you, you will say one, one feet, you know. Eh? You understand me? So I'm definitely using some Yoruba words so you understand the import of what I'm saying. Eh? One go eh? And they are frustrating you. And you are there. You can only be defending passively. Defending. Are you a goalkeeper? Every believer, we are attackers in the name. So we don't need to wait for the enemy to keep pushing us to a corner. Are you getting me now? We must be the one to get the enemy to the corner. Are you getting me now? So when you can only defend passively, once he gets here, so you are the one that will wake up. Ah, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm alone. I'm doing one room. For 18 years, it's only you. Ah, something is wrong. Are you getting me? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And you cannot continue to live like that. What legacy do you want to leave for your children? And you want to marry? Well, don't impress. I don't, I, I, are you kidding me? You must stand and take charge. Hallelujah. Imagine being the headquarters of God's power. And that's the, the lowest place where power is in this place. Uh, it's an aberration, abomination. A warning. Are you getting me now? The devil should not be able to have anything on you. Because you are the light of the world. So how can darkness prevail over light? Wait, you are not halogeno. I say you are the light of the world. Oh God. It should mean that because it, the light is the spirit. Is it not the spirit? If the light is the spirit, it means that if it is only one believer on the earth, the whole world should be lit. Oh, you didn't catch it. I say if the light is the spirit and it's the same quantity in me eh, and the man of God, me and this man, this sister, then it means if it is only me on the earth, the whole world should be lit. I wish you go. I'm trying to say, are you getting me now? How then can darkness push you back? You know, if we lock all of the doors and switch up and close all of the windows, the blinds, and we turn off all of the light, this place will be dark, right? You know, when we just touch one light, tackle, turn off, everyone will be lit. So it means that darkness is the absence of light, right? Abi, Abi, Abi. The absence of light. And you are, you are, you are light that is present. But you are acting absent. Are you getting me? I say you are light that is present, but acting what? 
absent. Hence, you see darkness trying to push you to the corner within your sphere, in your family. My sister, my brother, take charge. So people die. My family, I mean, what kind of statement is that? Are you guys getting me? These things should not be so. Eh? Ah, that was good for Tina and Manku. And you, and, you, and you are saying, and you are saying it. So you are forty-seven. You are already to call Willie. Ah, something is wrong with you. Are you guys getting me? So ah, where ah? Eh, uh, <laughs> where my my we are, we are, we were seven. We were seven. Now we are only two. We were we were seven. Now we are only two and a half. What is wrong with you? Because two is a life. One is in the sick bed, so two and a half. But you see, something is wrong with you when you are confident eh, in even making boast of the power of darkness in your life. Ah, I said, it, it, it is a plan of the enemy. It's a, it, it should not sponsor knowledge. Eh? It's not God. You know what we say? It should lag bala. It should not one. Are you getting me? It, it wasn't. Do you think God will say it should lag bala? I mean, can God say should lag bala? Of course not. So if God cannot say that, then I cannot say that. Say should lag bala konig bala lori mi. Olo in lori an one more, right? Because He has a domain. He has a kingdom. But I am not part of that kingdom. Colossians. It says I have been translated. Come on now, from the kingdom of darkness into that. Are you getting me? Of His Son. So I'm not of that kingdom. That is what it means to not be of the world. So the world is a place of darkness. But I am the light of the world. So I am the reason that the world will be better. Are you getting me? I said I am the reason that the world will be better. So you are a student of Futa. You should be the reason that Futa is enacting policies that favors the cause of God in Futa. Are you getting me? Let me break it down. I say you should be the reason that Futa is bringing policies and regulations that will push the gospel forward in Futa. Are you getting me now? Not the reason that darkness will keep advancing. Ah, are you getting me now? You know, he said a little sleep, a little slumber, and so poverty catches up with you. There are ki different kinds of poverty. You know, there is financial poverty, right? There is also spiritual poverty. You. May spiritual poverty not catch up with you. Because yeah. when the devil is pushing forward and advancing against you, then it must mean that you are wallowing in spiritual poverty. And the fact is your poverty is a poverty of ignorance. Because you have inheritance, but you are not claiming the inheritance. Yes, you have an inheritance. But you are not claiming your inheritance. See, the only inheritance you cannot claim now is immortality that is the body the redemption of the body that one is going to wait till Jesus Christ comes right but you see every other thing in the possession of Christ God has made it available to us and we can access it by faith that's why when I began I said that we must train ourselves and build ourselves in faith right so there's no emergency faith hallelujah I tell people I said the worst place to try to raise the dead is the mortuary Death is sitting down there. You know, death is Lord You don't know. Death is a spirit, right? And if there are 30 dead bodies there, then it means death is inside this person. Inside that one, inside that one, right? Top my foot 30. So if you are trying to remove death from one person, there are 29 <laughs> spirit of death that is already waiting for you. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Do you understand me now? Are you guys getting me? Yeah, see, the worst place to raise death is the dead can be raised in the mortuary. You understand me now? But I'm saying the worst place to raise the dead is just the much right. Because you will see spiritual rats that are eating your feet like this. Because you are trying to raise the dead, you are looking at somebody just here. On the... <laughs> are you getting me now? Maybe I'm sharing... See, I've seen things so... We went, we went to an hospital one time like that because some, I, some, someone that was related to someone that I knew had died. Of course, they didn't ask me to come and raise the dead, though. They only asked me to come and, you know, support my brother, whose younger brother died, you know, all of those things now. So I had a love it. 
But in my mind, I was still nursing the moon. Ah, ah, she be dead in me. She be dead. Mommy, she be dead in me. Who, who bring the dead back to life? When we entered the morgue, and I saw like 30 something dead bodies on the table. I saw a woman. I saw another woman. That's why you know there's no emergency fit. So, <laughs> See, you must already be raising the dead in your vision. Or else when you stand before a real dead body, ah! You would just be like, wow, you would even forget you want to raise the dead. So you must cut. Am I saying it's impossible to raise the dead? No, of course not. I trust the Lord for dead being raised. Are you getting me now? I'm saying that don't do emergency faith. My Lord, tell. See, if you have not begun to cultivate faith in the resurrection, it's not too late to start. That's what I'm saying. Do you get me now? It is not too late to what? To start. Hmm? May, may, see, may people that are dear to you not die. That's when you're now thinking, ah, I died known. I died known any law. law. Are you getting me? Are you guys getting me now? So you must cultivate your faith. As, as mothers, I don't know why I've been talking about mothers since morning. I might be your mothers. But you see, as mothers, you must, you must know enough to be able to keep your children alive at least. Maybe you don't mind your husband. That's not good. Though. But maybe you don't mind your husband. You must know enough to at least keep your children. Are you getting me? That's the list of... Hallelujah. Fathers, you must know enough to be able to keep your whole family. As in your whole family alive. Are you guys getting me? You must. To keep them in good health. What is a man that cannot provide for his family? So you must know enough to at least prosper. To at least take care of your family, right? But no, I'm, you will take care of your family. Why are you hiding your face? Now? You don't want to marry, sir. I thought so too. But you guys are getting me? Hallelujah. You must know enough. See, I'm just pouring out my heart this morning. We must stand as the living proof. Hallelujah. Of the power of God. Else, the power of God may remain unknown to our generation. You know, the fathers are passing away. Right? Well, we should have more than enough people. I'm not saying that we'll step into the shoes of the fathers. But I'm saying that at least you must be able to hold your own territory. We don't need... We don't need another Adeboye. We need you. Do you understand? You know, Adeboye is not another Idaosa. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Adeboye is Adeboye. Is that answer? Come on now. So we don't need another Adeboye. We need who? We need you to stand as a proof of God's power. Hallelujah. So say I will stand. Come on, church. Say, I will, I will stand at my station. Come on, say, I will stand at my guard post. Say, I will not sleep. Neither will I slumber until I see the light of Jesus flood the entire world. See, it's a commitment you're making. Hallelujah. And when we say that we are living proofs, it means that we should also raise the proof that we are living proof is that we are able to raise more living proofs. I wish you could come, friends. I said the proof that we are living proof is that we are able to raise more living proofs. That is because of us. There are other people that will rise up also as proofs eh? that Jesus is alive. Are you getting me now? Come on, church. Are you getting me now? So we must stay at our guard post and not sing. You know, we sing a song. The Lord taught me something about that song. What? Okay. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. You know this song? Our generation. You know this song now? You know that song? We sing it. And we sing it like, it's not a song of worship. Oh. You know, it sounds like worship, Abby. It's not worship. Come on, thank you, man. It is commitment. When you say our generation shall praise your name, you are saying because of me. You are saying I will ensure that my generation praises the name of Jesus. Are you getting me now? Come on, are you getting me now? 
So at least as a father, I'm at least responsible enough so that my wife and my children are praising the name of Jesus, right? And by praising, I'm not saying singing. Am I saying singing? No! They are witnesses. They are a testimony. They are a testament. So the fact that Jesus is alive. Are you getting me now? Come on, are you getting me? So in your home, you are holding the 40. You are holding the fort. In your home. Come on now. So imagine there's a man there. There's a man there. There's a man there. And they are all holding their homes. And then they come together to church. It means the church is strong enough. Come on now. To hold their entire vicinity. Are you getting me? Or you think it's the grace of the pastor that is serving the vicinity? It is only a bad job. Is that what they say? Laughing. It is when we all come together. Because no tree makes a forest. Come on now. I said no single tree makes a forest. And what we call an ocean is a body of water that other bodies are flowing into. Are you getting me now? So if you want... What's, this, what's the name of this road? It, if you want the entire Idore axis to be full of living proofs, please, what are we supposed to do? We need to stand as priests. Therefore, in our post, right? And at least do our own responsibility. Praise the Lord. I'm closing now. Are you getting me now? At least do our own what? Our own responsibility. Praise the living Jesus. Church, are you getting me? Say, I have a responsibility. And I want us to read the scripture. And then we'll trust the Lord for, for the flows of the Spirit. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5. Please turn your Bibles with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to close with this. Uh, let me start from verse 14. Thank you, Jesus. Are you there? Are you there? 14. I mean, 14. I want somebody in the church to read for us. Yes. So it says, For the love of Christ constrains us that with us judge that if, if one died for all, then what happens? Next verse. Let's read quickly, please. Talk together. And that he died for all. Why? Yes. So he says that we should no longer live unto ourselves, right? Come on, church. But for us to live unto him that died and did what? And rose again. Church, stand to your feet. I want to just pray a simple prayer. While I close. Let's even just, let's not even pray. Let's just sing the song that I sang and then I'll close with that. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Uh, is anyone born on the 1st of January? First of January. Here. Yeah. First of January. Are you the ones that come? Thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, please. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name, sir? Ed M. <laughs> okay. Razak, we are family members then. And I came from a Muslim family too. We are not family members now. In Christ, we are family members. Hallelujah. But you see, the Lord... Hey, let me take it in mind. I just want to speak very, very quickly to you. You see, one of the things I saw when I was about getting down there was I saw a man that was standing at the edge of a well. And as I looked, I thought he was going to drown. You know, I thought he was going to jump into the well and then drown. You know, that's the next thing that happens. Oh, you see, the Lord educated me. Because as I looked deeper, I saw the bottom of the well and I saw something that was flowing like oil. 
When I looked deeper, I saw it was not oil, it was gold. Man of God, you are standing at an edge. Mm. And it seems that your breakthrough is just a tiny step away. Are you getting me, sir? A very tiny step away. But you see, it's that tiny step that has been holding you back for such a long time. Man of God, have you always felt that you're close to a breakthrough? But you see, it's not always seeming like that. Fact remains that you are close to the breakthrough. But you see, it's just a single step away. Man of God, one of the blessings of a man of God is to be able to fast track things for you. So that the things that you may need to actually merry go round around, he cuts a path across for you and then he walk there. Are you getting me, sir? <clears throat> and because of time, I'm going to just pray simply for you. Father, thank you. Come, sir. Thank you for the spirit of grace. And thank you for the spirit of power. I ask in the name of Jesus that angelic help will come for you. Amen. And that little push that you need to step into the abundance that God has prepared for you. The Lord gives it to you. Amen. By virtue of the anointing operated in this house, the Lord helps you take that step. Amen. And you enter into your land of abundance. Amen. And your season obeys. Amen. And changes into a season of abundance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Man of God, live with this knowledge. You are like a mighty tree. But you are still growing. Man of God. And I see that when you reach a point in your growth, people will come to sit under you. And get shade and pluck fruits from you. Man of God, let the, there's a spirit of generosity upon you. But you see, that is of God and by God. Cultivate the art of generosity. Mm, the spirit of, is upon you, sir. But you see, cultivate. That is consciously practice, you know, in the direction of that generosity. And man of God, things will come to you faster than you've ever dreamed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, sing that song. Oh my yes. God. Lift your hands up, church. Oh my God. Our generation Make the commitment now. And as they are singing that song. If you have sickness in your body, you're getting, you're getting healed. Your wife is sick. She has a thing. She's nursing in her body. She's getting healed right now. Your mother is sick. She's getting healed right now. That ulcer goes. Appendicitis disappears. Arthritis disappears. Blood vision clears. Fibroid disappears. Father, we want to thank you. And we bless you. For such massive, mighty manifestation. We give you praise, Jesus. And I ask in the name of Jesus that by virtue of the anointing here, that every sick body is healed. Every confused soul has clarity. Lord, visit your people in their dreams. Visit them with visions. And show them the next steps to take. In the name of Jesus, from the oldest to the youngest, let them have a fresh experience of your power. In the name of Jesus. That young lady born on the 15th of September, the Lord asked me to tell you your struggle is over. The one born on the 10th of February and 10th of September, the Lord asked me to tell you you're healed and it's a new season. The one that is born on the 21st of February, the Lord is asking me to tell you that it's a new season. And you see, he's telling me to tell you that your business is about to take a new leap. You see, God is giving you contracts to sow, contracts to sow, contracts to sow. A school is going to come and meet you and you will take a contract or so and it will be a step into your new season. Thank you, Jesus. The 14th of March, you are blessed. And I 
I pray for everybody here. Let the power of God come upon you. Let it earmark you for miracles. Earmark you for breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. It's a new season in the house. And everybody partakes of it. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.